escoge. Please take your seats. The ceremony will begin in 10 minutes.
Ladies and gentlemen, I am Professor Tarika Webb. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the University of Illinois Chicago College of Education 2023 Commencement Ceremony. Today's music is provided by the Elegant Ensemble under the direction of Mark Olin. This commencement brings together members of the University of Illinois Chicago family, students, college administration, faculty and staff, relatives, alumni, and friends to assure that everyone enjoys this meaningful event. Would you please take a moment now to turn off or mute any electronic devices that may detract from the ceremony? Thank you. I present to you the administration of the University of Illinois Chicago and of the College of Education, and I present to you members of our distinguished faculty. Everyone, please rise as you are able and join us in singing the national anthem led by Asia Felton. Gentlemen, please remove your caps. The words can be found in the back of your program. Oh, 
Broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in. Gave proof to the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say us that star spangled banner that wave o'er the land of the free and the home. Thank you. Please be seated. In the spirit of building a better future and healing, I would like to take a few moments to acknowledge that UIC resides on the traditional territories of the three fire peoples, Ojibwe, Odawa, and Badawatami. This area was also a site of trade, gathering, and healing for more than a dozen other native tribes. What's more, the state of Illinois is currently home to more than 75,000 tribal members, and the Chicagoland area is currently home to one of the largest and most diverse urban native communities in the United States. We recognize that indigenous peoples are the traditional stewards of the land that we now occupy living here long before Chicago was a city and still thriving here today. As we work together today on these territories and in the year ahead, we must remember our responsibility, especially as a land grant, an Asian American and Native American Pacific Islander serving institution, Hispanic serving institution, and minority serving institution to find ways to right the historic wrongs of colonization and state violence, and to build bridges with and support indigenous communities' struggles for self-determination and sovereignty. Thank you, Professor Webb. I am Catherine Cheval, Dean of the College of Education, and on behalf of the faculty, staff, and administrators of the College of Education and the University of Illinois Chicago, I am thrilled to welcome you to this celebration and recognition ceremony. You may have attended ceremonies in the past that were quiet and subdued. That is not the expectation of this ceremony. We expect to see joy and hear the noise as we honor our graduates. So we're going to get started by displaying some joy with a selfie of our graduates.
This event is an opportunity to embrace the wonderful memories, the joy, the laughter, the tears, and the hard work. Graduates, you have a right to be very proud of yourselves. You all consistently amazed us with your intelligence, leadership, resilience, persistence, and most importantly, caring. In other words, you impressed us on a daily basis. If you haven't heard it lately, families and friends, you did an amazing job teaching and raising these phenomenal graduates. Three of my own children recently graduated, and at those ceremonies, I was so proud to sit in the audience. Graduates, I know that there are members in the audience who have supported and loved you, and you would like to take the time to thank them. So, as you are able, would the parents and guardians of the graduates please wave or stand to be recognized? Parents and guardians. As you are able, would the grandparents and great-grandparents please wave or stand and be recognized? <laughs> Spouses, partners, and significant others. siblings and children of the graduates. <laughs> and just in case I forgot you, extended family, friends, and others who just decided to be to the best commencement. This event is the culmination of hard work and dedication on the part of our graduates. A large number of people contributed to the graduates' success throughout their time at UIC, including many faculty and staff, as well as teachers and administrators who serve in our partner schools and communities. Recently, I contacted our graduates and asked, what would they say to their families and guests if they could walk up to the podium and share their thoughts with you? I truly wish that we could do that, as their, their responses were profound. Some of you wrote speeches for me and sent that. I really appreciated that. So as I read the responses from the graduates, I was struck by their messages, and I would like to share some of these with you. The graduates are speaking to all of you when I share these words. First, they acknowledge that they had a difficult time finding the words to express how much you mean to them. One wrote, quote, words cannot express how grateful I am for all of you. I cannot say these two words enough. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Second, they acknowledged the support and impact of their family and friends, especially when they felt discouraged and overwhelmed. One wrote, quote, thank you for always supporting and believing in me, even when I did not believe in myself. I could not have done this without you. Another wrote, quote, I'm reminded of the countless sacrifices you have made to get me to this point. You have given me unwavering love, support, and encouragement every step of the way, and for that, I am forever grateful. And a third wrote, quote, I would love to thank all of those who have helped me get to where I am today. My husband of 23 years has always supported my continued education. My beautiful 11-year-old son, who sat next to me while we both did homework. I want him to know that it's never too late to set goals for yourself and follow your dreams. Another wrote, quote, to my parents who left their hometown and came to the United States not knowing a single word of English, thank you. To my sisters, Thank you for letting me complain and cry about schoolwork in front of you and never giving, letting me give up. To my baby boy, mommy is doing this for you. I hope that you grow up and proudly select bachelor's degree on the drop-down menu for the category that says mother's education level. 
To my partner, thank you is not enough to express the gratitude and love that I have for you. You more than anyone else how to, knew how hard college was for me and the countless number of times that I cried, stressed myself out, felt angry, wanted to give up, stayed up late to complete assignments, and wanted to quit. Thank you so much for pushing me and reminding me that I always dreamt of being a teacher. The third consistent message in what you wrote to me was that the graduates acknowledge that you have given them opportunities, opportunities to pursue their dreams and goals. One explained, quote, thank you to my parents first and foremost for immigrating to this country so that I can have the opportunities they could not provide us in a foreign country, end quote. Finally, one wrote, we say it takes a village to raise a child. It also takes a village to earn a PhD. <laughs> For those in the front row here, they're, they're agreeing with that. <clears throat> I would not be here today without the gift of my family and friends' support and encouragement. Thank you, my husband, for making more than your share of dinners and reading so many versions of everything. Thank you, my family and friends, for encouraging words like, you got this, keep going, and never forgetting that I was on a journey of a lifetime. And thank you to my grandchildren, because I did this for you. Someday, I hope you will be on stage receiving your PhD. The graduates also wanted to share some wisdom with their colleagues, those are, that are sitting here. First, this is only the beginning of our amazing journey. We will make mistakes. However, we will heal and we will learn. We will grow stronger and smarter because of them. Second, to be truly effective educators, you must also practice empathy and compassion as we've seen from our educators here at UIC. Understand that every student is unique with their own set of strengths and challenges. Strive to create an inclusive and supportive environment where each child feels seen, heard, and valued. Third, I've always believed in the quote by the great Arthur Fletcher, this is a student writing, not me, a mind is a terrible thing to waste, but after witnessing firsthand at what the brain can do, time is a terrible thing to waste. You can't get back time, end quote. And finally, life doesn't begin when you be receive your degrees. You might be thinking that at the moment. It began when you were born. Keep striving for greatness, end quote. Graduates, you have chosen to pursue the field of education. Ed education influences and impacts every community, every profession, and every family. You chose wisely. And I look forward to hearing future stories about your influence and impact. Congratulations. We are thrilled to be here today to ce celebrate this accomplishment with each of you. I would now like to introduce the distinguished members of our platform party. Joining us today, in addition to the provost, who I'll introduce shortly, is Nicholas Jones, who is the Executive Vice President of the University of Illinois System. Thank you, Vice President. Also seated on our stage are College of Education administrators and faculty members who have supported the professional growth of our graduates. Please stand and be recognized. Faculty administrators. I would also like to acknowledge and thank the UIC staff who have worked tirelessly behind the scenes to organize and coordinate today's celebration, as well as support the graduates on their academic journeys. I would especially like to thank Elise Wilson, Maria, Maria Luna Duarte, Associate Dean. Where is she, Maria? Maria's here somewhere. There she is. LaDawn Thomas, the entire student success team. I'd like the staff to please stand and be recognized. That also includes the UIC staff generally that just opened the facility, those that are watching from home, all the technology that takes place with live streaming. So all of those people as well. We're very grateful for what they've done for us today. Thank you. I would now like to introduce Provost Karen Colley. Dr. Karen Colley has served as UIC's Acting Provost and Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs since June 2022, her second time serving in this capacity. She's also served as Dean of the Graduate College since 2012 
She's a professor of biochemistry and molecular genetics in the College of Medicine. Dr. Kali also serves as the director of the Portal to Biomedical Research Careers Post-Baccalaureate Research Education Program, the Pipeline to an Inclusive Faculty, faculty Program, and as the editor-in-chief for the journal Glycobiology. Since joining UIC in 1991, she's been recognized as a university scholar, co-founded and led the first umbrella graduate program at UIC, and served as the associate director of the Medical Scientist Training Program. Dr. Kali received her bachelor's degree in chemistry from Duke University and her PhD in biochemistry from Washington University, St. Louis, and later continued her training in cell and molecular biology as the NIH-funded postdoctoral fellow at UCLA. Please welcome Provost Kali to the podium. Well, I have to say I'm very excited to be here today, and you guys are fantastic. Seated before me tonight is a graduating class unlike any that has come before them. This is the long-awaited and much-deserved celebration of all you've accomplished and the new adventures that are ahead of you. So please help me kick things off and join in a big round of applause one more time for our graduating class of 2023. Now, Dean Cheval is a very hard act to follow, but I have to thank everyone all over again, okay? So just bear with me. So thanks again for coming tonight, and I would like to thank extend a special thank you and warm welcome to our speakers today. First, G2 Brown, the National Director of the Journey for Justice Alliance, who will provide our keynote address. As well as the three Dean Merit Awardee students from whom we'll also hear. I want to thank Nicholas Jones again for coming tonight. Dean Cheval already thanked Nicholas. And I also want to thank the families, friends, and loved ones of the graduates here tonight. Thank you not only for being with us to mark this special occasion, but more importantly for being an invaluable source of support for these students. I think that your students will agree that they could not have done it without you. So thank you. One more time for them. An immense thank you to all the professors, mentors, advisors, and staff in the College of Education and at UIC whose support for and belief in these, your, you guys out there has helped you navigate and triumph over and most importantly learn from the challenges you have faced these last few years. So alongside your friends, classmates, research partners, and collaborators, you've achieved something truly remarkable, and you should be exceptionally proud. While all students face obstacles during their studies, you have not only endured and overcome disruptions and losses that occurred in your lives and our communities during the pandemic, but you have also demanded and continue to fight for a more just and inclusive future for generations that will come after you. And all of you have left your mark on the university and the world. Your legacy at UIC is one of resilience, commitment to the pursuit of knowledge, and radical care for each other and your communities. UIC has become a greater institution because of the contributions you have made during these last few years. On behalf of everyone in this room, thank you for letting us be a part of your academic journey and your success. No matter where life may lead you next, know you are forever a part of UIC's community and that you are always welcome here. And more than that, please, to continue, please continue to come back, visit, share your successes with us, volunteer, contribute, and help us inspire and support students that are coming after you. So let me tell you about who you, this graduating class is. These are a remarkable group of individuals who are destined to become change makers in the educational sphere in Chicago and beyond. They include 20 doctoral students, 143 students receiving their master's of education degree, 
140 undergraduate students. And of the undergraduates, 70 percent of these students will be receiving high honors from the College of Education. And also in this group are members of the second cohort of students from the Call Me Mister program that prepares, okay? <laughs> I'll tell you about it in a second. That prepares young men from diverse backgrounds to be be urban elementary school teachers with the goal of positively impacting the lives of young children in and around Chicago and the U.S. I want to extend a special congratulations to graduates from this program. Let's do it again for them. In just a few moments, your lives will change forever. You will soon become alumni of the University of Illinois Chicago, new members of legacy of leaders, innovators, and scholars. This new chapter in your life may bring a mix of emotions as you forge your own path ahead in this world. But unlike your first days at UIC, you will now move forward equipped with new tools to succeed. The wisdom, lessons learned, skills honed, and networks of support that you've built in your time in the College of Education and at UIC. These will be the keys to your success and the success of people around you. I want to encourage you to seize the opportunities before you and to keep growing and learning. Do not shy away from challenges and taking those unexpected paths, for you never know where, you might, where these might lead. I joined UIC as an assistant professor 32 years ago, and I can't believe the path I come down. I never expected to be standing in front of you like I am today. I've had many mentors who encouraged me, provided opportunities for me, and challenged me. But one of my greatest mentors was my father, and he was my biggest supporter too, who would stop me in my tracks every time I started to complain about the challenges and obstacles I was facing. And he'd say, but look at how much you are learning. I, at the time, that was sort of annoying, but when you think about it, he was absolutely right. And I, I keep remembering that every time I, I start complaining to myself about these obstacles I'm facing all, every day. So in this spirit, I ask you not to shy away from taking risks and facing challenges. View them as learning experiences and keep moving forward. Each of you has so much to give. You never know where your path will take you but I'm convinced that all of you will make this world a better place. And so finally, to the class of 2023, congratulations once more. We are so tremendously proud of each and every one of you. Now that we know what we're doing. <laughs> Good evening. It's my honor, or our honor, to introduce our commencement speaker, Mr. G2 Brown. Been uh, knowing G2 for 20 years. There is a through line from the Chicago Education Justice Movement to mayoral election of Brandon Johnson. an ex-teacher and Chicago Teacher Union organizer. That movement emerged when Paul Vallis was appointed CEO of Chicago Public Schools in 1995 and made Chicago a laboratory for high-stakes testing and probation for black and Latinx schools, leading to the 2004 plan to close 20 of 22 schools in the historic black community of Bronzeville. But Bronzeville is home to the Kenwood Oakland Community Organization, COCO, Chicago's oldest black community organization. And COCO fought back, linking the plan to close schools to gentrification of their community. At the center 
was Coco's education organizer, G2 Brown. As school closings and education privatization escalated under Mayor Emanuel, parents and teachers organized resistance, and G2 quickly became a key citywide leader, thinker, and voice for justice. G2 has consistently been an eloquent, powerful model of principled practice, reaching out and helping organize cross-city, cross-race, community union coalitions, speaking truth to power and explicitly confronting racism and white supremacy. After Rahm Emanuel closed 50 schools in 2013, Coco led the fight to save Diet High School. Bronzeville's last neighborhood public high school, creating the Coalition to Save Diet, in which members of the College of Education participated. G2 was a leader and participant in the 34-day hunger strike in 2015 that kept Diet open. Out of these local struggles against racism and privatization, G2 helped launch and is national director of the Journey for Justice Alliance, and a national organization of Black and Latinx parent-led community organizations fighting for education justice, equity, and quality of life rooted in Black and Latinx self-determination. G2 has been an anchor and visionary of the education justice movement in Chicago and has galvanized and strengthened struggles for justice around the country. In solidarity, we are so honored to welcome G2 Brown as our keynote speaker. And en español. Hola, buena noche a todas y todos. Hay una línea recta desde el momento para, por la justicia educativa en Chicago hasta la elección como alcalde de Brandon Johnson, ex maestro y organizador del Sindicato de Maestros de Chicago. Ese movimiento surgió cuando Paul Vallis fue nombrado el jefe de las escuelas públicas de Chicago en 1995 e hizo de Chicago un laboratorio para pruebas de alto riesgo y libertad condicional para escuelas afroamericanas y latinas, lo que llevó al plan de 2004 a cerrar 20 de 22 escuelas en la historia comunidad, histórica comunidad afroamericana de Bronzeville. Pero Bronzeville es el hogar, el hogar de la organización comunitaria Kenwood Oakland, COCO, la organización comunitaria afroamericana más antigua de Chicago, y COCO contraatacó conectando el plan para cerrar las escuelas a la gentrificación de su comunidad. En el centro estaba el organizador de educación de Coco, G2 Brown. A medida que el cierre de escuelas y la privatización de la, de la educación se, se intensificaron bajo el alcalde Emanuel, los padres y las madres y maestras organizaron la resistencia, y G2 se convirtió rápidamente en un líder clave de toda la ciudad y una voz para la justicia. G2 siempre ha sido un modelo elocuente y poderoso, de práctica basada en principios, tendiendo la mano y ayuda, ayudando a organizar, organizar coaliciones comunitarias y sindicatos interraciales diciendo la verdad al poder y confrontando explícitamente al racismo y la supremacía blanca. Después de que Emanuel cerró 50 escuelas en el 2013, Coco lideró la lucha para salvar a Diet, la última escuela secundaria pública del barrio de Bronzeville, y creando la coalición para salvar a Diet en la que participaron miembros de nuestro Colegio de Educación. G2 fue líder y participante en la huelga de hambre de 34 días 
en el 2015 que mantuvo a Dai abierto de estas luchas locales contra el racismo y la privatización, G2 ayudó a lanzar y es el director nacional de Journey for Justice Alliance, una organización nacional de organizaciones comunitarias afroamericanas y latinas dirigidas por padres que luchan por la justicia educativa, la equidad y la calidad de vida arraigada en la autodeterminación afroamericana y latina. Gitu ha sido un ancla y visionario del movimiento de justicia educativa en Chicago y ha estimulado y fortalecido los, las luchas por la justicia en todo el país. En solidaridad nos sentimos muy honrados de dar la bienvenida a Gitu Brown como nuestro orador de graduación. Gracias. Good evening. You all got to do better than that. You act like, is this a funeral or a graduation? Good evening. All right. Como estas, compañeros? What's up? How y'all doing this evening? Good, good. You all look good. You really look good. So, before I get started, uh, first I just want to uh, give honor and praise to my beautiful wife, Sharon e. Brown. Put your hand up, Bay. Let them see you. Okay. My brilliant son, a Johnny Brown, put your hands up. All right. He's a Kenwood Bronco, future All-State football player, guaranteed. My baby sister, Crystal. Hey, Crystal. And my nephew, Seth. He looks like somebody's uncle, but he's actually my nephew. All right. And um, that's called happy wife, happy life. So yeah, just make sure y'all understand that. All right. So first. I would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to the faculty and staff of this prestigious institution, the University of Illinois at Chicago College of Education, for the honor of allowing me to share this moment with you. I would also like to congratulate each of you, the graduates, as you journey into one of the world's noblest professions, teaching. Are you ready for the journey? Yeah. Well, imagine this. You might not be when I get finished, well, imagine this. You're standing on a dirt road all by yourself, all alone. And all of a sudden, a wise elder appears on the road. You feel in your heart that you can trust this elder. And he says that in order to realize your reason for being, you must travel this road. On this journey, you will experience euphoric joy, inspiration, fierce commitment, hope and hopelessness, frustration at feeling unappreciated, and fulfillment. Fulfillment from assisting human beings from kindergarten babies to college students in understanding why they are here on this earth at this time in this place. Fulfillment when your former students, now adults, come back and, tell, and thank you for believing in them, pushing them to be their best selves. See, you're not striving to be investment bankers or accountants, no disrespect. You are making your life's work children. And for that, you all deserve a heartfelt round of applause. So let's give it up to them. What I've learned in my over 30 years of partnering with teachers and working closely with teachers is that your work is holy work. You are preparing our young people to inherit and transform society, and I say that you are ready for this journey. But I must beg your indulgence, as I do what a community organizer must do. I want to speak truth to power. Those of you who will teach in public schools are matriculating into systems that fail our children on purpose. Whether you are a classroom teacher or administrator, 
you will find yourself in situations when my, a mind-numbing number of standardized tests will threaten to interfere with your life's work to inspire and inform. You may find yourself in schools where inequity that is intended to sabotage the future of your students. In Chicago, state-sponsored sabotage of public education ignored deep-rooted inequity so that schools were weaponized to help push black people out of this city to the tune of over 100,000 children since the year 2000 and nearly 300,000 black people pushed out in the same time period. This is the hopelessness, hopelessness that I spoke about earlier. This is the reality of those who want to keep Chicago America's most segregated city they want you to accept. But sisters and brothers, I'm a witness. What the corporate class wants and the elected officials who carry their water want is not what we have to accept. For those of you who say, well, I don't do politics, politics does you. And everything is political. In America, everything is political. And so when you walk in the classroom and you see metal detectors, but there's no art, that's political, right? So the late, great Ella Baker, one of America's greatest community organizers, once said, oppressed people, whatever their level of formal education, have the ability to understand and interpret the world around them, see the world for what it is, and move to transform it. For those that don't know, Ella Baker was the organizer who helped to start the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. As the former education organizer of the Kenwood Oakland Community Organization and now the National Director of the Journey for Justice Alliance, I've worked closely with two of your faculty, Drs. Pauline Lippman and Rico Gustine, and a graduate of this amazing institution, Dr. Rhoda Gutierrez, following this principle. Community wisdom and academic expertise are necessary ingredients for school improvement. I served on a local, can I tell y'all a quick story? Can I tell y'all a quick story? All right. So I served on a local school council at Walter Diet High School for 10 years, from 2003 to 2013. Despite having the largest increase of students going to college and the largest decrease in arrests and suspensions, Chicago Public Schools voted to close our schools through phasing it out in 2011. This was our last open enrollment high school in the historic Bronzeville neighborhood. At that time, as the I was the education organizer at the Kenwood Oakland Community Organization. Prior to CPS's decision, I began to meet with parents, educators, community residents, and students from Diet and six of its feeder schools to build a community vision for what we called a sustainable community school village. As diet students began to organize to stop the closure, I reached out to my friends, Dr. Lippman, Gustine, and Gutierrez, to help develop policy papers to expose the inequity that diet was subjected to. One of the things we did was a course comparison between diet, Lakeview High School, and Northside College Prep. And of course, when you looked at the course offerings, you saw state sponsored sabotage. So after doing this policy paper, we developed our vision for Diet into a full academic plan for Diet Global Leadership and Green Technology High School. This partnership, officially called the Coalition to Revitalize Diet, allowed us to raise the issue of structural inequity and develop a beautiful, fully developed plan for our sustainable community school village. In this process, I learned that people will fight for what they helped to build. This plan was lauded by the Learning Policy Institute, the American Federation of Teachers, and the American Education Research Association, who said it was one of the best academic plans they'd ever seen. And it was a partnership between educators, parents, youth, and community. The fight grew more intense as we had to do sit-ins, school board disruptions, and other direct actions to show that this was our school and we were not going down without a fight. Unfortunately, former Mayor Rahm Emanuel forced, tried to ignore our demands, and on August 17, 2015, 12 of us launched the Diet Hunger Strike. As was stated before, it lasted 34 days. 
three of the 12 hunger strikers were teachers. Ms. Dr. Prudence Brown, Dr. Monique Rideau, and Dr. Aisha Wade Bay. Three weeks in, the Diet 12 became the Diet 15. Wild guess at who was one of the, who was one of the three that joined the hunger strike. You knew that already, okay. <laughs> Mayor-elect Brandon Johnson joined the diet hunger strike in the third week. At the end of this grueling experience, because you all look at me and probably was like, you ain't been on no hunger strike, but, <laughs> all right. I own that, I own it, but I did and we won. And today, diet is open, it is thriving as it is the only closed school in American history ever reopened as an open, open enrollment neighborhood school with $16 million in new investments and it's a sustainable community school for neighborhood children in our community. So, the struggle for education equity where community members and educators are working together to combat school privatization is not just happening in Chicago. So wherever you go to teach, in New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Pittsburgh, Oakland, Milwaukee, Philadelphia, and so many other places, people are organizing and winning sustainable community schools, restorative justice practices instead of zero tolerance policies, more black and brown teachers in the classroom, and this work has reverberated all the way to the White House. Due to community organizations and educators working together, we held the first ever presidential forum for education equity in Pittsburgh in December of 2019. As a result of this work, we moved President Biden to double the funding for community schools and add $31 billion for Title I schools. These powerful national victories were only made possible because of local alliances with educators and community organizations. Earlier, I mentioned that my charge was to speak truth to power. The power is not government. The power is not corporate interests. If you haven't figured it out yet, sisters and brothers, the power is you. We are conditioned to believe that we are powerless. Everything we see teaches us that we can't win. But the truth is, oppressive societies that are rooted in greed and racism benefit from an unconscious constituency. But history teaches us that organized people can accomplish anything. You are the power. So the lesson that I want to share with you is that you all cannot allow yourselves, as you matriculate into classrooms, to become a spoke in the wheel of inequity. As educators, your mission is to develop dreamers into doers, to prepare young people who will impact America, it is our responsibility to transform the education system into one that is rooted in equity, high expectations, and human development. Many of you will teach in communities where most of the institutions are controlled by outside interests who operate those institutions based on their opinions of the people in those neighborhoods. However, right now, you are sitting in a city where the education justice movement just defeated the Chicago political machine toe to toe. Those early fights for education justice, the fight against the Mid-South Plan in 2004, the Little Village hunger strike of 2001, the 2012 teachers strike, the 40 day occupation of the Whittier Library in the Pilsen neighborhood, the diet hunger strike, the 2019 teacher strike and several other battles laid the foundation for the moment that we're in now. Sisters and brothers, imagine that we, we can create a world-class pre-K through 12th grade system in education in every neighborhood within safe walking distance of our homes. Imagine, dream of Chicago where students enjoy internships at one of the, of the many community-based organizations, not in Chicago, but across the country. Imagine a revitalized city colleges of Chicago where we grow our own entrepreneurs, we grow our own uh, 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 grocery store owners, we grow our own community leaders and elected officials. Sisters and brothers, 
we can build a Chicago where we encourage our children to question, challenge, and lead. We cannot achieve this if you are isolated in your classrooms. Learn from the communities that you are in. Become a student of community wisdom. Build the partnerships. Understand that schools are community institutions. And understand this, sisters, sisters and brothers, because I'm a living witness to this statement. We must be bold and daring and push possibilities to the limit for our only limitations are the ones we accept. Are y'all ready for the road? Are y'all ready for the road? All right, all right. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Brown, for your inspiring words and for your presence today. We're thrilled to recognize your inspirational work and it added to your long list of awards. Would you please uh, join me at the podium? You have to come back, Mr. Brown. <laughs> uh, on behalf of the UIC College of Education, I hand that to you. It is an honor to present you with the 2023 Dean's Impact on Humanity Award. Thank you so much. In recognition of your tireless pursuits of justice and liberation. Yes, Thank you for enhancing the lives of others yes, and strengthening our communities in Chicago and the state of Illinois. Yes, Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. I think he was surprised. <laughs> it's hard to keep surprises from G2 Brown. Great teachers are the heart of a great university. The University of Illinois Chicago annually recognizes and honors its outstanding faculty. Recipients of the UIC Silver Circle Award are selected by our graduating seniors to honor those who have taught them with distinction. I am honored to present this year's recipient, Professor Jennifer Olson. Dr. Olson's teaching is innovative, relevant, challenging, and appreciated by her students. She invests a great deal of time to teach and support her students inside and outside the classroom. Dr. Olson creates a classroom environment in which students feel comfortable taking risks and sharing their thinking. She carefully considers and builds on the knowledge, skills, attitudes, and beliefs that students bring to her classroom. She uses a variety of instructional techniques and is known for her challenging and relevant assignments. Dr. Olson's success has been facilitated by two of her greatest qualities, humility and her desire to learn. Dr. Olson, please come forward to accept your award. Congratulations, Dr. Olson. UIC recognizes graduates who have distinguished themselves in various ways during their academic careers. Will the following students please rise and remain standing? Students who have been members of the Honors College as designated by the Gold Stoles. Don't be shy. There we go. <laughs> remain standing. There we go. Good job. Graduates. With high academic achievements, summa cum laude, magna cum laude, and cum laude is designated by the gold, silver, and bronze cords. Please stand and remain standing. All right. Graduates who have earned college honors, please stand. And graduates who have earned departmental distinction. All right. Everyone, please join me in applauding these outstanding graduates. You may be seated. It gives me great pleasure to bestow the Dean's Merit Award. Every year, the College of Education recognizes and honors outstanding graduates who have demonstrated academic excellence, who possess exemplary qualities, and who will serve as role models and ambassadors for the College of Education and UIC. 
The 2023 Dean's Merit Awardee for the Outstanding Doctoral Candidate is Nancy Dominguez Frett. <laughs> Dr. Dominguez Frett is a native Chicagoan from the community of Little Village. Anybody from Little Village here? Okay. Who came to study at UIC as an undergraduate student. She applied to our doctoral program in literacy, language, and culture after working as a high school Spanish teacher for many years, specializing in Spanish as a heritage language SHL classes. Dr. Dominguez Fred is a diversifying higher education faculty in Illinois fellow who received the prestigious Ford Foundation Dissertation Fellowship and wrote a dissertation that was distinguished. Please, um, congratulations, Dr. Dominguez Fred, and join us at the podium. I will start by sharing that as an undergrad, I used to work as an usher here in the before called pavilion, and it's way bigger when you're up here than when you're over there. <laughs> Distinguished faculty, proud parents, and fellow graduates, we are here today to celebrate our educational accomplishments with the people in our life we love most dearly. Thank you for being here. I want to take a moment to show gratitude to our loved ones who have passed away. The seeds you have planted are finally blooming and we could have not done this without, without you. As we stand here adorned in our very extensive cap and gowns, we, we are reminded of the incredible journey we have undertaken to reach this momentous occasion. Our graduation represents years of hard work and sacrifice, but we didn't do this alone. First, I want to express my deepest gratitude to our families, nuestras familias, who have supported us every step of the way. You have cheered us on during our successes, picked us up during our failures, and sacrificed so much to see us achieve our dreams. Your unwavering love and support have been our guiding light during this journey. Special thanks to my husband, Freddy, who's over there, and my daughter, Sofia and Sevi. Thank you for your patience and kindness during this journey. <laughs> Secondly, I want to highlight the power of our community, nuestra comunidad. Throughout our academic journey, we have formed bonds and friendships that have enriched our lives. We have learned from each other and grown together. We have shared challenges and tears, celebrated victories, and created memories that will last a lifetime. Our comunidad, whether it's our best friends, our proseministas, our tech watches, our mentors, and our children, our husbands, have provided us with the strength and encouragement to persevere, especially during really tough times. The smallest don't give up, o tu puedes, mija, keep going, kept us going and pushed us to overcome our own self-imposed limitations and fears of not being good enough. When we walk this stage, let us remember that we are not walking just for ourselves, but we are walking for our parents, our communities, nuestros barrios, and for future generations. I know when I walk this stage, my parents are walking up with me too. Gracias, mami, por todo lo que has hecho por mí. Y papi, no sé dónde estás, pero gracias también por sus sacrificios. Hoy no me graduó solamente yo, nos graduamos nosotros los tres. Um, can't cry. <laughs> Makeup looks too good. Okay. Class of 2023, we are trailblazers, and it's our duty to ensure that the doors that we have op open for ourselves remain open for others who look like us and sound like us to walk through as well. Even if that means to cross the borders of the unknown, the unfamiliar, and the unwelcome, and create a light that brightens and shines and illuminates the path for those of us behind us who have similar dreams and aspirations to ours. Let's continue to strive for excellence and inspire others and make a difference in this world. From Jalisco, Mexico, La Villita, <laughs> and the far southwest side of Chicago and beyond, mi gente, si se pudo, we did it. Congratulations to all. Dr. Dominguez Fret, thank you for being a trailblazer. Congratulations. Provost Kali, can you join me at the first podium, please? The degree of Doctor of Philosophy is the highest degree bestowed by the College of Education in recognition of a rigorous academic program culminating in the writing of a dissertation. Each of these scholars has invested several years in careful preparation under the guidance of faculty to produce an original piece of research 
that makes a contribution to the body of knowledge and education. Each of these scholars will now go on to be leaders in education as professors, educators, administrators, researchers, and community activists. We in, rec in recognition of the candidates' scholarly accomplishments, they will be hooded on stage by their faculty advisors. I'd like to welcome Provost Kali, who will confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. That's Thank you. you. Oh, it's me too, sorry. <laughs> I have to read my script better, sorry. Well, the candidates for the degree, <laughs> the Doctor of Philosophy, please rise as you are able. <laughs> Provost Kali, upon the recommendation of the faculty and by vote of the Senate, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Upon these recommendations by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon each of you the Doctor of Philosophy degree for which you have been presented and admit you to, and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of that degree. You may now move your tassel from right to the left. Congratulations. Please be seated. The degree of Doctor of Education was one of the first doctorates of professional practice established at UIC and represents the highest professional degree available to educational practitioners. It is a nationally recognized program ranked number 16 by US News and World Report, and it serves as a model in the state of Illinois and the nation. Each of these school leaders has invested several years in rigorous, closely supervised clinical practice as well as demanding coursework with faculty in the College of Education. Each of them has completed a culminating capstone project that has built capacity to improve student learning. Together, these leaders will go on to achieve significant improvements in schools, districts, and the future of school leader preparation. In recognition of these school leaders' accomplishments, they will be hooded on stage by their faculty advisors. For Provost Kali, will you again confer the degree of Doctor of Education? Will the candidates for the degree, Doctor of Education, please rise. <laughs> Provost Kali, upon the recommendation of the faculty and by vote of the Senate, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degree of Doctor of Education. Upon these recommendations and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon each of you the Doctor of Education degree for which you have been presented admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of that degree. You may now move your tassel from the right side to the left. Congratulations. Please be seated. You're going to get up again soon here. Well, the new doctors of philosophy and doctors of education, please come to the stage to be hooded by their faculty advisors and to be recognized by Provost Kali. <laughs> and instruction under the direction of Dr. P. Zitlali Morales. Doctoral project, sowing seeds of resistance, heritage Spanish teachers engaging in testimonial and critical action research.
Dr. Duane Bernard Davis has received a PhD in curriculum and instruction under the direction of Dr. Aria Razfar. Doctoral project, The Interior Lives of Early Career English Teachers, Narratives, Stances, and Symbiosis. Dr. Monica E. Ulrich has received a PhD in educational psychology under the direction of Dr. George Karabatsos. Doctoral project, The Effect of Teacher Calculator Use in Mathematics Classrooms and Assessment. Dr. Xu A. Zhang has received a PhD in Educational Psychology under the direction of Dr. Teresa Thorkeldson. Doctoral project, How Migrant Families Support Children's Trust in Themselves and Their Caregivers in Rural China. Dr. Diane E. Mitchell has received a PhD in Educational Psychology under the direction of Dr. Teresa Thorkildson. Doctoral project, how high school students' employment intentions blend evaluations of school and workplace behaviors. <laughs> Dr. Stephen S. Oxman has received a PhD in educational psychology under the direction of Dr. Teresa Thorkildson. Doctoral project, Moving Toward Mastery, Learning Dashboards and Persistence in Digital Courseware. Dr. Glennis Laverne Green has received a PhD in Policy Studies in Urban Education under the direction of Dr. Nicole Nguyen. Doctoral project, City of Black Women's Shoulders, examining policy-relevant educational efforts for liberation in Chicago. <laughs> Dr. Melina Lisas has received a PhD in curriculum and instruction under the direction of Dr. Nathan Phillips. Doctoral project, such stuff as PD is made on, a case study of a professional development cohort. Dr. Megan Sharissa Richard has received a PhD in policy studies in urban education under the direction of Dr. Shelby Costner. Doctoral project, emancipatory school leaders in educational market contexts. Dr. Roberto Carlos Rivera has received a PhD in Educational Psychology under the direction of Dr. Dakota Irby. Doctoral project, School and Community Leaders Experiences Implementing Critical Well-Being During the Dual Pandemics. Dr. Corey M. Morrison has received an EDD in Urban Education Leadership under the direction of Dr. David Myrowitz. Doctoral project, Implementing Coherent Instruction, Exploring Cultural Challenges in Building Teacher Leader Capacity. <laughs> Dr. Laverne Evadne Koch Wright, has received an EDD in Urban Education Leadership under the direction of Dr. Cynthia Barron. Doctoral project, Building a Healthy School Community Through the Exploration of Social and Emotional Learning. <laughs> Dr. Claudinette Swartz has received an EDD in Urban Education Leadership under the direction of Dr. Shelby Costner. Doctoral project, Developing Capacity for Cycle Leadership.
Dr. Jason Matthew Roberts has received an EDD in Urban Education Leadership under the direction of Dr. Cynthia Barron, doctoral project developing an adult learning organization through a focus on a singular department. <laughs> Dr. Jennifer Vitkus has received an EDD in Urban Education Leadership under the direction of Dr. Jason Salisbury, doctoral project deprivatizing practice to improve a high-performing school. Dr. Vincent Michael Iteralde has received an EDD in Urban Education Leadership under the direction of Dr. David May Rowitz. Doctoral project, From Theory to Practice, the Effectiveness of Leader Learning Through RPPs. Dr. Margaret Catherine Byrne has received an EDD in Urban Education Leadership under the direction of Dr. Cynthia Barron. Doctoral project, Improving Adult Learning to Impact the Experiences of Diverse Learners. Dr. Angela Fortune has earned a PhD in Literacy, Language, and Culture under the direction of Professor Taffy Raphael. Her dissertation is entitled, Band-Aids Don't Fix Bullet Holes, a Longitudinal Study of Sustainable Professional Development for Culturally Responsive Literature Instruction. Dr. Fortune will be hooded by Dr. Goldie Muhammad. Congratulations to all the new doctors of philosophy and doctors of education. Please, please give a round of applause, you already started, to these graduates who have devoted many years to their professional growth. We know, the many years, we know they will make a significant impact on the field of education and their communities. Congratulations. It gives me great pleasure to bestow the Dean's Merit Award on the outstanding master's degree candidate who has demonstrated academic excellence, possesses exemplary qualities, and will serve as a role model and ambassador for the College of Education and UIC. The 2023 Dean's Merit Awardee for the outstanding MED student graduate is Mr. Gerald Day. Ms. <laughs> You have a fan club, pretty cool. Mr. Day has led a life of service throughout high school into his adulthood. When asked how his commitment to service, as he calls it, came to be, his responses included, quote, I want to advocate for kids just like what I needed. I want to see people who look like me, and I wanted to make sure I could be like someone that I needed when I was younger. I see that my work to help others is not done yet. Mr. Day was a recipient of the LEAD Federal Scholarship through the Department of Education Office of Special Education Programs. He's accepted a position at North Shore County 
uh, Country Day School in Winnetka beginning in fall 2023, working as a STEM teacher along with other administrative duties. Also for the summer, he will be the director of Camp Kumba for black youth. I know his inspirational journey will serve as a model for his future students. Congratulations, Gerald. Please come forward to say a few words and receive a gift of recognition. Wow. Um, <laughs> thank you, I appreciate you. Uh, before I start, uh, families, faculty, friends, can we give a round of applause to all our graduates here? I look good, y'all look good. Let's, let's give a round of applause for everybody. Whew. I'm honestly humbled to have received the Dean's Merit Award. Not to say that I'm not deserving, but I'm learning life's lessons as we speak. That it's okay to be in the moment. You should accept in that very moment that all the acknowledgement, grace, encouragement, and celebration that comes with succeeding and excelling. But I can't help but to hesitate, take a step back, and look at the journey behind me. To look back at all the obstacles that I've overcome leading me to this moment right here. Who would have thought that the little five foot four high schooler that had no confidence in himself whatsoever and was stuck with this delusion that he would always be a loser with no idea where his life was headed would make it this far? Who would have thought this same high schooler as a senior who was told by his stepmother he didn't have what it takes to go to college and only allowed to apply to one school would be a graduating with his master's degree? Who would have thought this same student that had to take time off from undergrad multiple times to care for his mother as she was diagnosed with breast cancer will be right here on this stage? I wouldn't have thought it'd be me, but yet here I am today. My story is a true testament of my perseverance and patience as I went through the ups and downs in this journey we call life. There were times where I didn't know what I was going to eat, there were times where I didn't know where I was going to sleep. But yet here I am today. I always remember that it's not where I'm at right now, but where I'm going. I didn't know what the end goal would be for me and what that would look like. But one thing I knew for sure is that if I kept my head high, worked hard, and took action with my heart and my community, I would end up in a good place someday. And here I am today. I say all that to say, congratulations, graduates. We made it. The beauty of overcoming adversity and conquering challenges isn't just in the destination. It's in the journey. It's in the process of discovering ourselves, of learning what we're truly made of, and of realizing that they we're capable of so much more than we ever thought possible. And that's why persistence is key. When we're faced with obstacles, it can be tempting to give up and throw in the towel. But the most, successful in the, people, the most successful people in the world aren't those who never fail, but the ones who keep going, even when they stumble and fall. So if you're ever feeling up, excuse me, so if you're ever feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling like the challenges in your life are too much to bear, I want you to remember one thing, you're stronger than you think. You have the, res thank you. You have the resilience within you to face any obstacle and overcome any challenge. If you stay persistent, if you keep putting one foot in front of the other, you'll come out, uh, you'll come out the other side a stronger, wiser, and more capable version of yourself. So keep going, my friends. The road may be long and winding, but the journey is worth it. And the destination is even sweeter for those who persevere. Before I end this, I just wanna leave you all with a quote from one of my great favorite fictional characters, Michael Gary Scott. May our caps soar as high as our dreams. Thank you.
Mr. Mr. Morris, let me say this real fast. Mr. Day, thank you for modeling persistence and resilience. We have a lot to learn from you. Thank you. The degree of Master of Education will be bestowed on those candidates who have sought to further their knowledge in the field of education. Many have come from other disciplines to become licensed as teachers. Others will explore youth development work or early childhood education, policy making, administration, leadership, higher education, assessment and evaluation work, special education or other endeavors in education. I would now like to call upon Provost Kali to confer the degree of Master of Education. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Education please rise as you are able. <laughs> Provost Kali, upon the recommendation of the faculty and by vote of the Senate, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degree of Master of Education. Upon these recommendations by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon each of you the Master of Education degree for which you have been presented and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of that degree. You may now move your tassel from the right to the left. Congratulations. Please be seated. Will the new Masters of Education please come to the stage to be recognized by Provost Kali. Gerald Nkosi Day. Mariel Estelle Harris. Von Seal Coley. Devin Jefferson. Thank you, son. Senia Bukova. Cecilia Maldonado. <laughs> Rabil Ramzan. Ala Sale Latoya and Hazard <laughs> Mache Denise Griffin Lucila Sandoval Maria Mora Haley Elizabeth Maher. Dominique Michelle Maxi Vega. 
Celia Flores. Anna M. Arroyo. Emily Barrera. LaDonna McWilliams. Yeah. Ashley Allengear. Samantha A. Hernandez. Elena Guzman. Melissa Alexandra Charleston. Tizzeri Seffel. Francesca Elizabeth Wagoner. Keisha Perry. Gabrielle M. Warren. Danielle Jordan. Danielle Clay Ramsey. Imani Monique Fountain. Julian Pierre Lomax. Alexandra Asaidu. Madison Williams. Sonia Reyna. Keisha King. Rochelle Scott. Sylvia E. Hopkins. Martine Williams. Sylvia Ledesma. Carl Rogers. Yeah, Dana Lynn R. Garcia. Alicia Sandoval. Elaine Starr Russell. Rikaya Chanel Williams. Juan Ines Mina. Patricia Diane LaRue. Sochil Delgado. Elvia Sandoval. Gabriela Olvera. Vanessa Diaz. Erica Gonzalez. Jasmine Kim Collar. Batania Geraldine Locati Mascareño. Dana Marguerite Melhorn. Emily M. Starrett. Kaylin Christoph. Wei Fang Mei. Grace H. Lepret. Allison J. Stevens. Jennifer Marie Ray. Kathleen Correa. Kiana Cachet Early. 
Kelly. Christian M. Heinzel. Susana Guzman. Rachel Bodie Gross. Ruth Annette Rivera. Allison Lewis. Taylor Michelle Devine. Nicole Unique Powell. Mireya Hernandez. London Michelle Hubert. Brittany J. Palmer. Allegra Miller. Hillary D. Bright. Kara J. Scott. Rachel Wilson. Courtney Burrell. Claudia Berenisa Cerda. John Stavola III. Kayla J. Edwards. Mackenzie Malena Wadick. Arthur W. Maine. Jennifer Savala. Bernadita Maria Lavin Ferrado. Melissa Whitehouse. Myra L. Figueroa. Catherine Marie Hickey. Cassandra Parker. Darnisha LaShawn Williamson. Julia Sophia Papa George. Anna Hope Sawyer. Isabella Morales. Stephanie J. Reyes. Janet A. Smith. Marlene Cordova. Melina A. Canella. Monica Simone Ortiz. Nalicia Valdez. Yesenia Popoca. Tommaso Tirelli Prampolini. Yesenia Rocha. Cheney Gao. Akanka Khan. Monica Sanchez Torres. Katie Ashlyn Poyer. Iram Fatima Sheikh. Imani Nicole Fagan. Carly M. Barajas. Josiah Kyrie Berry. 
Fasika Zelalu. Emily Cecilia Huff. Louis Peter Pontillo. Jessica Burgess. Catherine Emily Corrigan. Annalise Marie Brandel Tannis. Nicholas Anthony Gross. Feng Dan Zhao. Paul Francis Kairala. Shauna Serena Matson. Fatima Radiha Riaz Ahamadeen. Aristides Philip Theodoropoulos. Andre N. Barjovenu. Ali A. Al Rafai. An Kim Tran. Dima Abdul Razak. Graduates, your families and guests, along with the faculty and staff of the College of Education, take great pride in your accomplishments. I'd like to salute you with a round of applause. Please join in acknowledging these new masters of education. It gives me great pleasure to bestow the Dean's Merit Award on the outstanding bachelor's degree candidate who has demonstrated academic excellence, possesses exemplary qualities, and will serve as a role model and ambassador for the College of Education and UIC. The 2023 Dean's Merit Awardee for the outstanding bachelor's candidate is Isaiah Stewart. Mr. Stewart is a, bat, is a graduate of the Bachelor's Degree in Human Development and Learning Program. While enrolled in the program, he served as a College of Education undergraduate ambassador and was very active as a student leader who inspired, guided, and empowered students to achieve their academic goals. I'm look sick. You're okay. <laughs> After graduating in May, he is planning to pursue a doctoral degree in educational psychology with an emphasis in human development and learning at the University of Illinois Chicago. He also plans to mentor youth in executive management and financial literacy, something that he found himself having to navigate without any knowledge after his father passed away. In his own words, I want to turn what I went through into something great for someone else. I want to be that. I want that to be my legacy. Congratulations, Isaiah. Please come forward to say a few words and receive a gift in recognition of your accomplishments. Y'all see, I got a little excited there. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> but good evening, everyone. I'm very honored and humbled to accept this award in front of my classmates and our loved ones. I want to thank God, my family, my friends, and a special thanks to my mother and father. None of this would have been possible if they didn't stop encouraging me to explore even while I struggle with the discomfort of growth. I'd also like to thank the College of Education's faculty and staff, the Office for Student Success, and a team of advisors that banded together to inspire and empower all of us en route to this accomplishment. Thank you to Dr. Luna Duarte and our Dean Catherine Cheval, and my amazing, amazing, amazing professors and peers. Some of us were also advised by Jennifer DeLago and Clara Bell Gomez. So on behalf of my cohort, thank you. As much as this award affirms me that I've made an impact at UIC, I have to 
point out that I am still no different from you all because we never relented in our pursuit towards this goal. As you reflect on the steps that you've taken along your path, don't forget about the ways you've evolved in the process. Maya Angelou says, we delight in the beauty of the butterfly, but rarely admit the changes it has gone through to achieve that beauty. My fellow graduates, I hope you share your stories, experiences, and the growing pains of what it took to get to this point with your loved ones. To the loved ones in the room, you may be surprised to learn the true extent of our development during this journey, because it's been a journey. <laughs> I know the hardest part of my journey took place in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. My family lost my father. My family lost my father and my grandfather in the span of four months. Two months later, my best friend Kari, who is here today, lost his mother to her battle with Parkinson's and we laid her to rest one week before my birthday. I share this part of my story to express that I know I don't stand alone when I say that this, beyond this award, this accomplishment of graduating isn't just for me or my fellow graduates. It's for the people who have experienced any degree of loss during the pandemic. It's for the people who struggle with mental health and fight through it anyway. It's for each and every one of the villages we belong to. I choose to believe that everything that has happened has prepared us for this moment. And sometimes it is through periods of loss, adversity, and feelings of doubt that one's purpose becomes clear. As you step across this stage, understand that even the hardest part of your journey is not over. In honing our expertise in the field of education, we've dedicated countless hours in one way or another. I sincerely pray that we hold on to the memories, lessons, and friendships ignited during our time here. I urge you to continue to lead while making a positive impact on the world, knowing that our commitment in education has equipped us with the tools to overcome any challenge. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Isaiah, thank you for sharing your journey with us and for making significant contributions throughout your program. You made the College of Education stronger. Congratulations again. The Bachelor of Arts degree in urban education is designed to prepare undergraduates to become teachers in urban elementary schools or educators in, educators in schools and communities in Chicago. Our graduates have engaged in intensive preparation and are leaving us well prepared to make a positive difference in the lives of children and youth. The Bachelor of Arts degree in Human Development and Learning provides students with a strong grounding in research and theory concerning learning and development across the lifespan. Our graduates have a deep understanding of how contextual, institutional, structural, and cultural factors affect individuals' developmental trajectories and the implications for this for working with people in a variety of contexts. I'd now like to call upon Provost Kali to confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Urban Education and the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Human Development and Learning. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts in Urban Education and Human Development and Learning please rise as you are able. Provost Kali, upon the recommendation of the faculty and by vote of the Senate, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Upon these recommendations and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon each of you the Bachelor of Arts degree for which you have been presented and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of that degree. You may now move your tassel from the right to the left. Congratulations. You may now be seated.
Will the new Bachelor of Arts graduates please come to the stage to be recognized by Provost Colley. Isaiah M. Stewart. Daniela Alicia Martinez. Arlene Tiffany Amea. Madison Nicole Jamrock. Claudia Banya. Elizabeth V. Cansadal. Diana Guachichulka. Maya Ventura. Jaslyn Monique Ayala. Michelle Garcia. Jasmine Marissa Diaz. Stephen Kyle Sermon. Itzayana Sosa Naranjo. Sitlali Villafuerte. Evelyn Sarate. Diana A. Diaz. Sophie Isabella Laroque. Carla Melissa Adelano. Isis Basildua. Paloma Asensio. William Joseph Washburn. Esmeralda L. Arroyo. Yarith Cirillo. Jacqueline Ortiz Basave. Jennifer Dominguez. Marlene Villamar. Estefany Sanchez Hernandez. Sergio Navarez. Amari Roberts. Anissa Nicole Comas. Juan Carlos Hernandez. Angelica J. Kohulun. Alex Menares. Angelus Quezada. Elizabeth Torres. Yaritza Hasel Uribe. Brenda Lima Hiron. Juliana Wante. Madison T. Gifford. 
Grace Ann Haynes. Jasmine Santana. Jim Wang. Dylan H. Davidson. Daisy Wade. Evelyn Ceballos. Andrea J. Mejia. Ashley Arredondo Torres. May Ahmed. Sophie Claire Russen. Rebecca Faith Olesko. Emily I. Dryden. Sonia E. Gonzalez. Yesenia Garcia Sanchez. Ariel Arista. Wesley Allen Mullins. Michelle Hernandez. Eric Santiago Sanchez. Janet Chavez. Annalise C. Mays. Berenice Baruman. Nan T. Nugent. Hannah Kerrigan. Saja A. Musa. Anais Serna. Kelly Irene Watrock. Emily Morgan Schultz. Kylie Justine Holcomb. Jalen A. Burt. Ethan David Godina. Eric Miguel Diaz. Iftikhar Ahmed. Amy L. Banks. Serena Yehia Rehala. Stephanie Villa Gomez. Reina Silva. Patricia Oropesa. Daisy Garcia. Jasmine Castro. Yadira Correa. Jocelyn Marin. Farheen Rashid Patel.
Jacqueline Navarro. Elizanena Ibarra. Janice R. Robinson. Lisette Velasquez. Nakaya N. Alfred. Muskan R. Hamid. Karina M. Shaw. Jessica Chavez Flores. Lizette Rodriguez. Maria Ruiz. Alejandra Rogel. Ulisa Carranza Baez. Gladiola Mendez. Mahum A. Elahi. Donovan D. Edelman. Jai Chen. Jorge L. Salgado. Sidra M. Abushar. Hai Ting Yu. Zenzai Jones. Jocelyn Morales. Sydney Claire Jocelyn. Christina Fuong La. Grace Ron. Yesenia Karina Martinez. Laura Ines Perez. <laughs> Cynthia Robles. <laughs> Kayla Noel Bush. Yaselin Maria Paredes. Daniela Rendon Mejia. Itzili Candelario. Mia Jessica Hayes. Yatsari Gaitan. Cassandra Alexis Gonzalez. Carmen Ramos. Brenda Ortiz. Carla Fatima Maya. Daniela Valdez. Kristen Daniels. Abigail Avila. Giselle Gonzalez.
Jaina Ashley Ortiz. Sabine Asib. Carolina Varigius. Melissa Hernandez. Isabella M. Popek. Karina Santos Reboyar. Myra A. Avila. Serena Cheryl Salvato. Mary Claire E. Mangan. Alejandra Rodriguez. Sarah Marie L. Brogan. Jocelyn Diane Moreno. Carla Berenice Concepcion. Noor B. Baig. Bachelor's graduates, your families and guests, along with the faculty and staff of the College of Education, take great pride in your accomplishments and would like to salute you with a round of applause. Please join me in acknowledging these new Bachelors of Arts. To all the graduates, we hope you are proud of your hard work and tenacity that it took to accomplish this milestone. We encourage you to take the initiative to engage, inspire, and lead others in your communities. Look for opportunities and pursue them. Build relationships with people who differ from you. Ensure that you have an appropriate balance among all your activities and commitments. You have a great deal to offer education and society and we want you to be in the game for a long time. Graduates, you are now officially alumni of the College of Education at UIC. And we await your future achievements and watch with pride as you begin a new phase in your lives. Take advantage of the UIC alumni network. We will have a bigger impact collectively than we will individually. We also look forward to welcoming you, you back to pursue your next degree. I can honestly say that my three UIC degrees were transformational for my life. Let us know when you are ready for that next degree. Even if you have the PhD, you can do another one. It's great, yeah. I would like to conclude by thanking our keynote speaker, Mr. G2 Brown. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with our community. It was an honor to learn from you. A special thanks to each of you for coming today and being part of this convocation. Class of 23, now go out and celebrate and post your photos on social media. You earned it. Congratulations. The audience and graduates are asked to remain seated until the platform party and faculty have recessed. Tariq of Webb will finish us off. Congratulations to the graduates and to all of the family and friends on this memorable day. Please exercise caution when leaving the arena and parking areas. 
The 2023 commencement ceremony is now adjourned. Banner carriers, please come forward and escort the platform party and faculty. Thank you. 